Hi there everyone and welcome back to my channel where this week we'll take a look at some lemongrass, canna lilies and camellias. I also want to show you a few very sick looking plants which I purchased this week. They were very heavily discounted and I thought maybe I just might be able to revive them. There's lots more going on so please grab yourself a cuppa, sit back, relax for a few minutes and let's get into it now. It's so peaceful out here in the garden this evening. I've just been out here picking these dahlia flowers. Usually this time of day is quite noisy out here with people mowing their grass. They've got the whippersnippers going and even yesterday someone had a chainsaw. But it seems very quiet at the moment and I'm completely enjoying it. I've got a great feeling about this weekend. I was just down in the town getting takeaway from my family and everyone was in fine form. It's probably because most people have the next five days off with it being Easter time. I'm planning on spending a bit of time out here and my priority will be getting some garlic, sweet peas, broccoli and cauliflower into the ground. And most of those plants will be going into the fan garden which is just past this archway. In fact, <laughs> this structure here I'm really concerned about. You can see it's quite full on top now with all of the vining crops and plants growing up there and it has actually kind of slightly tilted over to the side. I really need to make it a lot more secure because honestly every time I go under here I'm kind of a little bit nervous that the whole thing is going to collapse on top of me. Do you know what? It would be fun if it wasn't so dangerous. It's almost like going through the wardrobe into Narnia or entering the secret garden. That's a cockatoo. Isn't it so noisy? It sounds like a crow. He's up there in the Grevillea Robusta tree. Okay, so you can see he's over there now. Checking us out. While he hangs out up in the tree, we'll come down this way and I'll go through what's going to be happening in here. So you may remember this is where I had all the tomato plants at the back, the amaranths and then different types of flowers. They've all been removed from here and I'm left with this lovely blank space that I can work with. I really need to come in here now and fix up all the soil that's been moved over to the pathways because if you have been following me along for a while you'll know that this section here had five rows along this space and then over on this side there was one big garden bed. So I just need to move the soil so it looks a bit neater again, amend the beds, and then that's when I'm going to be putting in my cauliflowers and broccolis in here. And then I'm thinking up along the back, I might put a whole row of sweet peas. You can see I did move, out, move the tomato plants out, but I just haven't removed them from the stakes yet or some of the bags too. So there's a bit of work to be done there. Um, but I'll get it done. I mean, my kids are off now for two weeks, so there'll be plenty of time staying at home. And if I just do, say, an hour, at least even an hour a day, that I can achieve so much from that, which I'm looking forward to. And you can see back here, I've also cleared out this space. Now, the next thing I want to look at is this, which is the lemongrass. Let's chat a bit about this. I put this plant in the ground about four months ago or so. Um, when I put it in, I had just purchased it from a garden centre and it was in a small pot around that size. So it was quite small. And you can see by the look of this one here, it actually grows quite fast. I put this in a full sun position. Lemongrass loves heat, so it does really well in the warmer climates. And also, it really needs to be put into free draining soil that's rich in organic matter. And if you give it all those requirements, plus keep the water up to it, you'll be rewarded with a lovely big clump like this, which is very easy to propagate. And if I dig it up, I'll be able to overwinter it for next season. I want to show you how easy it is to harvest this. So all you do is you go down to the base of the plant, you grab one of these stalks, hold it nice and firm and give it a bit of a twist and it just pulls off like that. It's this white part here that most people use in cooking. 
and the green part is often dried and used to make a lovely subtle lemongrass tea. The other wonderful point to make about this perennial plant is that it's very easy to propagate. So to get more of these plants, all you have to do is remove some of these outer parts and place it in water. And in about a week or two, you should see lovely fresh shoots coming up. Once they appear, you can put it into a pot and you have a brand new plant. The cannas or canna lilies are flowering around the garden again. I unintentionally have built up a bit of a collection of these perennial plants over the years. Some were already on the property when we moved in, others were purchased at local plant sales and some gifted. These colourful flowers usually bloom in summer autumn time here and I think they add a touch of the tropics to this temperate climate here in my cottage garden in New South Wales. They love a neutral to slightly acidic, well-drained soil. And interestingly enough, they grow well in containers as well as in the ground. I've seen my garden idol, Monty Don, grow these in large pots, using them as a showcase plant in his garden. They've got lovely big leafy foliage, which looks lovely at the back of a border. And then when the flowers come, it's just an added bonus. It's certainly a plant that I have grown to love over the years. As I said, not one that I kind of really went out to seek to have in my collection, but now that it is here, it is a lovely addition to my cottage garden. This camellia tree is flowering again. It's one of the many mature trees and shrubs which were in the garden when we moved in 12 years ago. I could try and take some credit for how beautiful it looks, but honestly, it takes care of itself. I know that it loves acidic soil, good drainage and plenty of organic matter. Every couple of years, I used to put a thick layer of bark mulch at the base. However, that's a little bit tricky for me to do now because you can see here I've underplanted it with lots of shade loving perennials. Once this tree stops blooming, all of these petals fall down to the base. You can see that it's kind of starting to do it already with some of them. And what will happen with these is they will decay. And I'll come in here now with a shovel, move some of these off the pathway which honestly, there is meant to be a pathway here. You can just see how much work I need to do out in the garden. And anyway, I'll get the shovel and I'll move all of these decaying petals over to this area. And then they again will start feeding the tree, giving it nutrients for next year's bloom display. I just gave those lorikeys a bit of a fright. They were perched in the camellia tree and I didn't notice them. Poor little things, but they're up now. There you can see one. Let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. He's on the Grevillea. See, there's a couple of them there. I've never had the best of luck with indoor plants, but I really want to improve my skills with them and build up a bit of a collection in the sunroom. So during the week, I went to a garden centre and they had quite a lot of plants discounted. These three here, which are indoor plants. Oh, look at this. The leaf just came off. This is a very sick little plant <laughs> that I need to try and revive. Anyway, I was saying when I went to the garden centre, um, they had lots of plants reduced and I picked up these three. Um, maybe it's not the best thing to be doing when I don't have much experience with them to try and um, you know bring them back to full health perhaps I probably should have bought just some brand new plants but the thing is I don't know about where you live but indoor plants are quite expensive this one here I paid three dollars and originally it was 36.99 this one cost me let's check three dollars again and it was 21.99 and finally this one which doesn't look too bad cost 
me see there's the name of it and it should be on the container oh here we go five dollars originally being 34.99 these three plants cost me eleven dollars in total i saved roughly around eighty dollars which is quite good but it won't really mean anything if i end up killing all of these it just means i've lost eleven dollars so wish me luck i'll keep you updated i'll have to do a bit of searching on the internet and um, i have a few rough ideas what to do with plants in general checking if they're root bound the soil conditions removing dead foliage but then i do need to do a bit more reading up about these well it's that time of the week again where i'm gonna have to say goodbye for another few days thank you so much for watching everyone and i'll see you again next friday